Thank you very much, everyone. It's almost lunchtime. Reciprocal style of teaching and peer assessment. Uh, my talk this um, afternoon will be based on my current publication on the International Journal of Learning. And it's based on an ED184 class. ED184 class is a physical education class that's used as selective study where children from all over the university can choose this as an enrichment to their program. So they might be doing uh, law or journalism or other courses, but choose it as a selective study to add to your enrichment in the university. And this study goes over four semesters, including 390 USP students altogether. And it's a study of my own practice in the class. So it's a practitioner of kind of research um, in which it, one of the pieces of assessment in ED184 is a, is a micro-teaching situation. Micro-teaching is a, is a popular laboratory and activity in teacher education in which students are put into miniature little lessons in which they get critique and, and, and feedback from, from teachers. And, it's, and, and children will ask to and appear them into twos and in which they plan a mini lesson of about 20 minutes altogether. Um, and they, I get them to teach at the school nearby. I have a relationship with the school nearby in which I take my students to and they get to teach a 20 minute lesson together in pairs, in one, one lesson and one cl um, class only, but in pairs. Uh, based on teaching games for understanding in physical education, which is a model of teaching physical education. And, and that piece of assessment is based and governed by a reciprocal style of teaching, um, which um, is advocated by Moston and um, and, and Sarah Asworth, somebody, um, and Sarah Asworth, I, I, I got to see her speak in an international conference keynote speaker in Brisbane last year. And she and Moston advocated and popularized the notion of the spectrum of teaching in physical education. It involves also um, peer assessment. Reciprocal style of teaching um, involves the observers observe the doers, vice versa, after which they provide specific feedback to the doer based on the task seat or the observation seat. So what you do is that I put them into twos and I, um, and I cluster them together. So I take them to a school. So once um, the, the doers teach a class of uh, 20 minutes, the observers observe and gave their feedback. And, and when the others teach, the others observe. Using an observation seat, that um, um, I gave them. So, so what they do in fact is peer assessment in which they, students collaborate to evaluate their own performance as well as those of their fellow students. So what you need to do if, if you want to have peer assessment involved in your, involved in your practices, you have a peer assessment plan. And to first of all define the observation seat. So they need to have a very clear observation seat uh, that's workable that students can, can use, and also to define assessment criteria that children need to, students need to know exactly what they're looking for. So they need to understand and define exactly what are those criteria, so they know exactly what needs to be, um, to be observed. And that involves training them to provide feedback. Very good. Um, it went well. That doesn't really say, apart from being a, a reinforcement, it doesn't really tell any much feedback to the students again um, at all. So, um, specific corrective feedback or specific um, reinforcement to students' teaching. And the teacher is responsible for observing the actions of the doer and the observer. So what I do as a teacher, I also observe as well. So it's not only the, the peers observing themselves as the doer and observer, vice versa, but I as a teacher, uh, the instructor or facilitator, I get to observe them as well. And, and in, in, in peer as assessment, it's also, also important to involve self-evaluation. So after they've taught uh, a class of probably about 10 or 8, depending on how much children the school provides us, we, um, they sit underneath the tree at the playground, and then they write down their own self-evaluation on the lesson plan, so what they thought the class went. All right, so they do a self-evaluation underneath the tree before we return to school also. So what, we, so what we have in this situation is that I have multiple feedback transmission routes. So it's not only the feedback in the piece of assessment from peers to peer, but it's from teacher to uh, the students, and it's also from themselves uh, when they self-evaluate. So, so, so the feed, feedback transmission route is multiple. 
and involves many, many students. And that respects, that, and that's very authentic, and much of the assessment in ED184 is authentic. Only one is traditional, in which they do a little written test for 10%, but all of the other pieces of assessment is authentic. This is authentic, it respects that students are not blank slates that come into your class without any prior knowledge at all. The traditional teacher education model was, I'm the sole expert, you teach, a micro a teaching situation, I give you what I think without minimal feedback from you, and that's it. You have no participation in it. In this one, it respects the students are not empty patterns coming to your class to be filled up with identical items, but they have a lot of things to offer, and, and that provides uh, additional feedback and collegial support and provides reflective practice amongst others. This is a teacher education situation and physical education situation, but I'm sure you can translate that. For example, maybe in a postgraduate class, for example, they're old enough to give uh, assessment and peer assessment to each other. They're not there sitting as empty patterns to be filled with identical items. There are a lot of things, and the way we deal with children today needs to be more authentic. Thank you very much for listening. Certainly, there is a certain correlation between the quality of the lesson planning and preparedness and the, and the quality of um, um, the quality of the implementation itself and student learning. So don't get into a class after a hour at the club. <laughs> <laughs> so the old thing of walking down the corridor preparing it is, is not preparation enough. Do you, you, you think walking down the corridor preparing it as you go is not preparation enough? <laughs> oh, 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 probably part of it. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for your presentation and for the presentation this morning. Lunch breaks for those